This is the Leadership Lessons Podcast, hosted by Pastor Daniel Williams, a podcast to encourage and equip church leaders. Brought to you by eeleaders.com. Well, hey, everyone, we're back at it with another great episode, and I'm excited that you're listening, that you're able to join in learning important leadership lessons with me. Uh, I have a special guest today. My friend Trip Kimball is going to help me out. He's a pastor friend based up in Jacksonville, Florida. I got to interview Trip Kimball and discuss the importance of investing in others. And Trip has a lot of ministry experience, a lot of wisdom we can glean from. He's planted a few churches, pastored a few churches, been on the mission field for many years, was a director of a Bible college. He still now serves uh, other pastors and just developing them and pouring into them um, and writes continually. You can go to his website word strong.com to be able to uh, just get great content. Uh, I just got finished actually reading one of his books, The Mystery of the Gospel, which I would highly recommend. It's a, a beautiful book where it just breaks um, breaks down hard, profound truths of the gospel into a common language. I just really appreciate how Tripp uh, does that, how he uses these great mysteries and truths that are so hard sometimes to explain, and he just does an excellent job breaking down truth uh, in his book. And in this interview, gives them some practical tips and some good insight on how to invest in other leaders. And so I hope you enjoy uh, my conversation with Trip Kimball. Hey everyone, I'm here with Trip Kimball, and it is a blessing to be able to talk to this man about discipleship and leadership development. And uh, Trip, can you give us just a little bit of information about yourself and what you're doing um, for the Lord right now? Sure. Uh, well, right now I'm with uh, Poiman Ministries, P-O-I-M-E-N, stands for Shepherd. Uh, it's basically a group of pastors who have uh, pastored, planted churches, I've done ministry for about 30 plus years, and uh, now it's our role to step, come alongside other pastors and uh, work with them, churches, we do assessments, we do, uh, yeah. I just got finished with a, a transitional pastor role. And that's awesome. So you work a lot with church leadership? Yes, primarily. Yeah. Um, and since you're working with church leadership, could you just give us uh, just a basic idea of why is church leadership important? to the church? I mean, what you, you, you seem to have a whole ministry towards that. Why is that even important right now? Well, one reason it's important is that we, just looking at what Jesus did, he, he invested about three years of his life in, in the lives of men who became the foundation for the church. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you look through, if you look through the pastoral epistles, 1st, 2nd Timothy, uh, if you even, some of the other epistles, basically you're looking at the, the need for leadership. There needs to be people who are, uh, who carry the responsibility of the church body, but those people need to be called by God. Because yeah. if there isn't that, that matching of gifts and calling in a person's life with uh, whatever their role might be within a ministry, uh, then you, you know, you're pretty much going to see disaster happen, which does happen. Yeah. What have been some um, stories from your past, how you've seen church leadership do really well and church leadership do really poorly? Well, I mean, I, you know, I've seen a lot of different ministries. Um, so from my own personal uh, experience, when I was pastoring, um, I, I planted a church. I started with no group of people, no building or anything like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll spare you all the details, but basically I was out, I was working in construction to make a living. Um, but I remember our first few uh, meetings, my wife was down the hallway with, on the way to the restrooms in a, in a public building that we were using. And I would greet the people, uh, lead worship, do the announcements, uh, <laughs> do the message, and then pray for the sick, and then greet the people on the way out. A you know? true church planner right there. <laughs> yep. So, but along the way, I, um, as the church did get established and started to grow, and I, I realized, wow, I need to be training up leaders. I mean, I just knew that that's just kind of an innate thing, I guess, because of my own development in, in uh, Calvary Chapel and Costa yeah. Mesa and, and that type of thing. And um, at the time, I had a guy uh, working with me who was uh, 
Uh, I, I really wanted him as an assistant pastor, but uh, life circumstances didn't make that happen. And I told him, I said, you know, I really feel like I need to um, uh, get some discipleship happening. And he started laughing at me. And I went, well, what's funny? He says, you naturally do it. So, so what I'm, I'm getting at is, is that it was so embedded in me, it was kind of a normal thing. So one of the things I would do is I'd take a group of guys and I would work with them for uh, several weeks on how to study the Bible, uh -huh. how to put a message together, basics on leadership, you know, what, what does it mean to be a leader in, within the body of Christ. And, but the other thing I would do is I would give them opportunities yeah. to, to, to do it. And, you know, it's the very thing that we see Jesus doing. You know, he, he sent out the, the, the 12, and then later on in Luke 10, it says that he sent out the 70 or 72, whatever your, your version says. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, as far as a, a bad example, uh, I just got through doing a five-month uh, uh, gig in, uh, in well, I won't say where the state is, but uh, a transitional pastor role. Mm -hmm. So I walked into basically a leadership vacuum. There were, nobody was in charge of anything. Wow. It, it, it really was something I'd never seen it before. So nobody was in charge of anything. So I had to answer question after question after question and basically reestablish the church and, and develop some kind of leadership structure before I could bring a pastor in. That was my role, was to bring stability and then prepare the church and help them vet a pastor to come in and take the church. Yeah. But I had to start like ground zero. It was, it was almost like re replanting the church over again. Okay, so let, let's talk about that as far as starting at ground zero because there are many people that have a heart to develop leaders, uh, but they just don't know how. All right. Or they know how, like you did, but it was all like intuitive. And there's a point right. when things that are intuitive actually need to be intentional. Right. And so when you teach other people, you grow, you learn, and you start thinking, oh, everyone's not like me. So what are some things that you saw that maybe were intuitive to you, but structures that we could take apart and say, oh, that's, that's where you could start? That's what you do? Like even this example, like how do you build some structures or a pipeline of leadership right. from you have people that love Jesus but don't really know how to cultivate the gifts that they have and... Right. Where do you where do you go? What do you do? Well, one of my go tos is uh, Acts chapter six. Okay. So in Acts chapter six, uh, there was a, a problem between uh, one group of the church and another group of the church. They one was feeling slighted, so um, they they came to the apostles, and the apostle says, "Look, we we can't stop what we're doing to take care of this need, but we see it's a need." Mm -hmm. And so they said. Choose seven men from among you who have a good report, in other words, good re reputation, and are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Yeah. So how would they do that? How would they know which men? Well, basically, they would see the people who are already doing it. Uh -huh. So a lot of times, that's one of the things I'll, I do is I just look, I, I just observe, and I watch people. I'm a, I'm, I'm a watcher anyway. So I, I want to see, well, who's doing what? Who does what well? Who does things that not so well? Because I don't want to put them in a particular role, you know? I mean, it's yeah. like if they have a hard time counting change, I don't want to put them in charge of the books, that yeah. type of thing. One of the things I see is that we're so, we, we've kind of gone back to this, what I call stand and deliver, where it's just a monologue. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to do is I want to get people to participate. I want to get them to interact. So one of the things I did uh, with a, uh, uh, one of the churches I was involved with for quite a while in Jacksonville was to establish a men's ministry. But on the side, I was taking a group of guys like I had done when I was planning a church. And I, I just poured into them what I knew, you know, okay. how to lead a Bible study, how to study, you know. And, uh, and then I gave them opportunity to do it. So we would take one week and one guy would be up and then he would lead it and then we would kind of critique it and and work through it that way. So those are really some simple things. But one, th you, you have to create opportunity for mm -hmm. people to serve. Yeah. And then you've got to also uh, keep on top of that and help them learn how to do it well. And, you know, what are things that don't work, what things work. And a lot of times, most people don't learn things except for by doing. Yeah. And, you know, that's just reality. Yeah, I was always taught that, um, well, vision is caught, not just taught.
Right. So you have to teach them and give them information. Right. But the reality is what I'm hearing from you say is you don't just teach them things and give them important lessons. They have to give opportunity to apply that. Exactly right. And then they have to not only have to apply that, but then they have to have follow up of evaluation. Did I do it right? Right. Did I do it wrong? What right. should I do better? Yeah. And so it's a whole different process than just delivering information. It's more of applying that information. Right. And you have to have both. You can't just right. apply what you don't know. So as you're giving these people opportunity to exercise mm -hmm. their gifts, um, people really discover their gifts when they're going forth. Hey, do I have the gift of this and that? And am I good at this? Right. And um, what happens when they discover they're not that talented at a certain <laughs> thing you gave them? Well, at some point, you're going to have to have an honest conversation with them. Yeah. And... Many times I found that when I have that honest conversation, they're relieved. Yep. Because they, they feel the weight of the responsibility, but they also feel like, hey, I'm, not, I'm just not able to do this thing. But I also want to be able to kind of discern and understand well, what are they good at? Mm -hmm. You know, what could they do? Yeah. And then maybe I need to put them in a place where they can they can serve and they can learn something else in another place. But most of the time I'm going to, if I have the opportunity, I'm going to put them with somebody who's already good at doing that, yeah. whatever that role is, you know, uh -huh. if it's children's ministry, if it's, uh, you know, cleaning the building or whatever it might be, the sound business, uh, sound, sound machine, the, you know, the, uh, the sound ministry. I want to put them with someone who can also train them. Yeah. Because there's that, that there's really a need for that one-on-one. -on -one and mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's, that's good because you want to send someone that doesn't know something with someone who does. So that way exactly. the person that's teaching, you're also, in a sense, training them because now they're at the teach right. that person that doesn't know. Exactly. And, that, and that's the other thing is as is, is I w was training people, I learned how to do it better. Yeah. So, so uh, in 1990, my family and I, we moved to the Philippines. I turned the church over in, in California and I moved to the Philippines. And... And one of the things that I did was, um, o over a period of time, I was asked if I would start a Bible college, a Calvary Chapel Bible college. And it's like, well, I mean, A, I don't have a college degree, and B, it isn't, even if I did have one, it wouldn't be a Bible college degree, but I'm, I'm being asked to do this, this Bible college. I came up with all these reasons why I wouldn't do it. Uh -huh. That was predicated on what I knew wouldn't work from a Western standpoint in an Asian culture, in an Asian situation. But the, the guy that asked me called my bluff, basically. And so he says, OK, do all those things. And so I had to learn on the go. Yeah. And, and so in, in the process of doing that, I learned how I learned some things not to do. Uh-huh. But I also learned some things to do, and, and I saw what worked well. And I, but a lot of that it goes back to what, what had worked for me. And that was, I had people in my life who spoke into my life, who were mentors. Mm -hmm. so, so you being a leader still had other leaders speaking into your life. Well, I did. But in that case, what I did was I was, I was going back to the time when I was being discipled and mentored. And I, I thought about, well, what did those people do? Yeah. So I looked at what did they do? Yep. And, I, and I tried to borrow it and adapt it to uh, the situation that was at hand. And so a lot of what, what I did was uh, simply, and I don't want to say mimic, but I I used that pattern and, um, you know, Paul speaks to Timothy and says, you know, what you've, what you've learned from me uses a sound pattern. Yeah. So uh, there is a pattern. It's just not, um, you, you can't follow it in a legalistic way mm -hmm. and in a cookie cutter way, yeah. but there is some pattern. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the leadership infrastructure, if you will. Yeah. So who are some of those people that have most impact you just as a believer, as a leader, and mm -hmm. maybe have been mentors or other people you've just gotten patterns from in your life? People have influenced you. Well, um, they weren't always people of great influence, I, I, I suppose, although uh, Chuck Smith was one of them uh -huh. uh, in, in terms of he was my um, 
first real pastor and and I, I learned a lot in terms of the, the word but I also learned a lot of other stuff from him and just yeah. in, in terms of I, I was on staff as a janitor I know it was a pretty coveted position a lot of people yeah. tried to fight me to get into that role but that's what I apply for yeah <laughs> and but but I learned a lot there and I got to see the ministry from the backside so um, I, I learned a lot from that point uh, another guy was the uh, was actually um, uh, same age as myself, but he had more years in the Lord, and um, he asked me if I would come out and work with him in, in a church plant and a retreat ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot from him. I learned um, how to put a message together, um, yeah. you know, in a step-by-step -step fashion. I learned a lot about leadership. I learned some things that were not so good uh -huh. too. So, so that's the other thing is, 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 is in the process of learning, you also have to be discerning enough to know, okay, that's not something I want to keep doing. Yeah. But then you've got to think about, well, what would work? You know, what, what, mm -hmm. what would be a better thing to do? Yeah. Um, another man that was very instrumental in my life in terms of learning to walk by faith, learning to hear the Holy Spirit um, was, uh, a man, he's with the Lord now. He was from Britain, mm. and he um, he was just a tremendous mentor to me in terms of the Scripture um, and uh, just learning how to listen to the voice of God yeah. and and walk with integrity. Mm. So uh, uh, the guy I worked for, a painter I worked for, um, who um, w was later on on my board, I learned a lot from him. Just how he ran his business. Mm -hmm. So it's like I learned from that. So I think that's another thing is, is you're not going to learn all this stuff in a Bible college. You're not going to learn all this stuff from a, 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 you know, a book on leadership uh, for church. I mean, you, you, you have to learn things just like Jesus taught all the parables with, you know, about fishing or, or sowing seed and farming and that yeah. type of thing. You know, that's God's great second book. Uh, next to the Bible is, is the book of, of creation yeah. and how it teaches us. And so we just have to be observant and learn from that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me too like you learn not just from one mentor, oh, but no. many mentors. Yeah, absolutely. And could you speak a little bit about that? Because I think sometimes we as younger uh, leaders want to have one guy we go to where I believe that if you see so, someone that has a great pattern or example of marriage, Get discipled and learn right, from exactly them on marriage. Right, right. Learn from that person on finances. Learn from this person exactly on parenting. Right. Um, right. Just just speak on that because that sort of frees me up as a leader too. Because I may not be the expert at, at running a mega church, but I know a little thing or two about church planning. Right. What I know, I could pass on, and it frees me up to just oh, here, this is what I could pass on to other people. Exactly right, and that and that's the thing is, is you, and you know, we talk about. First um, Corinthians 12 and and uh, and 14 about uh, each part of the body has a purpose and a, and mm -hmm. and a role and that sort of thing, but we need to really grasp that and understand that and utilize that. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with someone uh, in a, in a field or an area where I've got somebody who's has more expertise in that than me. Mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll turn them over to that. I'll follow up on it, yeah. but I'm going to turn them loose on that. So for me, uh, e even now, my role is uh, I'm the mentor. I'm the coach. That's the stage of life I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mentor several guys. You know, some are pastors, some aren't pastors. And or they're involved in ministry or missions and that type of thing. Uh, and I know they've got other people they look to. You know, and if, if they're only looking to me, they're only going to get my viewpoint. They're only going to see things from my point of view and yeah. my life experience. As far as I know, I, I, I've lived, you know, this, this one life. I don't know everything there is to know. You know, I haven't experienced everything in life. Yeah. I'm, I'm not an expert in everything. Uh -huh. So I, I want to gather from others. I still do. You know, I mean, I look at different resources. You know, they don't have to be just from one uh, vantage point, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Yep. So I rely upon him to give me discernment and wisdom about what do I need to learn about this? Who can I learn it from? And, and I think everybody needs to apply that in terms of mentors. Yeah. There, there's no human being that's flawless. So any mentor has their own flaws, their own blind spots. And 
I do just like anybody else does. So do you. I mean, it, yeah. we all do. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a need for more than one mentor. So it seems like right now you have the role of wisdom, experience. You've uh, done a lot of ministry, and you're in this role of coaching and mentoring. Uh, and many of us um, that are watching this or even listening, um, we've now are in roles where we have authority over people and responsibility right. to pass that on as well. But now we're growing in this whole coaching and mentoring thing right. and raising up leaders and raising up leaders of leaders and all that stuff. So do you have any um, advice or pointers or wisdom on how to pour into leaders, how to coach? What's the difference between just like leadership development and coaching and mentoring? Um, how do you do that practically with other leaders? So uh, it was a great question because I think we tend to want to gather a lot of information and then and then glean from that information and then uh, distribute that information. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of our, our tendency, especially in the West. When, uh, when I was director of this, this training center in Bible college, I, had, uh, I started getting, developing a staff of, of teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, many of them had been students and then they became uh, staff. You know, they, they worked as kind of like what we would call TAs. You know, they were, they were teacher assistants. Yeah. And, and I used them to tutor students and, and to check uh, their notebooks and things like that. But then I said, well, why don't you teach a class? You know, and so they would teach a class. So a lot of times one of the things I would do would be um, uh, I would, um, you, we'd had like formal training times, but I, I learned that if I walked into the Bible college office uh, from my office and I just sat around, talked with them, they would ask questions about stuff, you know, I'd say, yeah. you know, I've been thinking about such and such. And so a lot of these informal settings ended up being, I think, the most fruitful mm. because they were free to ask questions. Uh, they, it was it was immediate. There wasn't um, there wasn't the, you know some kind of stress or expectation of, of you know any kind of formal situation. Yeah. And and so um, really a, and a lot of times they just want to know well what's your view about something? What's your experience? Tell us a story. Tell us you know some situation. Mm -hmm. And and so I shared those things with them. And, and many times those, that was much more fruitful the more informal opportunities. Yeah, but it sounds like one of the big things that you were was as a coach, as a mentor, is just being available. Absolutely. Because, of course, you were pouring into them, teaching them things, but then also that other aspect of just being available and listening and answering questions. Listening is huge. Yeah. And, and by listening, it means we're not listening to wait for a break until we can talk. We're listening to the person and really hearing what they're saying so that we can respond to them. And, and it, what we're getting isn't just a generic thing or just the standard line. We're adapting and adjusting it to that person and their situation. Um, the, but the thing about making yourself available is an important thing. Yeah. So I need to, that's the intentional part of discipleship. Mm -hmm. So I intend to do that. I, I don't just wait to be asked. I know that I need to step up and do it. I, I just need to, to ask someone. Now, if they say, nah, you know, I'm good. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I need to be available. I need to be um, open to them. And, I, and that's, to me, it's, it's part of delegation. If you delegate some work, you need to follow it up. You can't just say, well, I'm done with that. Yeah. I need to follow it up if I'm a leader, if I'm a good leader. I'm going to follow it up and see how is it being done? Can I help somehow? Uh, when, is it, when is it going to be done? When is this job particular, uh, in particular going to be done? So I look at it as a follow-up. So yeah. I need to follow up with people hmm. uh, personally. You know, yeah. call them, email, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, one last thing, just as we end, can you give us uh, your just contact info or if sure. you're on Twitter or email or what I'm website a, you have? I'm, I'm sure on you, a bunch of stuff. I know you have your own website. You write a lot. Yep. Can you give us all that information and then maybe just one last piece of encouragement for those that are wanting to develop leaders? Uh, one last word of encouragement or advice that you have for us. Okay. Well, I do have a website. Uh, I'm, I'm part of Poiman Ministries website. So if you just typed in POI, menministries.com. You'd, you'd find me as one of the pastors there. But I have my own website. Uh, it's called Word, Word Strong, but it's Word-Strong. It's based on uh, 
2 Timothy verses 1 and 2, be strong in the grace of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then to uh, uh, what, what you have learned is a sound pattern. You know, you transfer that to other faithful men. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I do. I, I do a lot of writing. I do devotionals. I do some simple inductive Bible studies that I post every Friday. Yeah. Um, and I'm on Twitter and Facebook and all sorts of things like is that. This, is it just Trip Kimball? Yeah, you, if you or, plug in my name, Trip T R I P Kimball K I M B A L L. Yeah, you. Okay. I'm, I'm out there somewhere. Yeah. So I mean, I talked about the being available in terms of being a mentor. Yeah. But it also works the other way around. So if you want to be mentored, if you want advice, if you want some input in your life, you need to seek it. Yeah. I mean, um, you just need to seek it out and, and, and need to look to people that you trust and that um, you, you would want to learn from the pattern of their life. And, and basically you want to look at, you know, how do they live? How do they do ministry? How, uh, uh, not, not the, Ex the external things that you measure so much, but their character yeah. and uh, the quality of their character and, and their, their, their relationship with their wife, their children, that type of thing, and even their, how they live their life on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, those are the kind of things I would look for. Well, it's so much fun getting together with these pastor friends and sort of letting you in on the conversation to learn from them. And I just love being able to sit down and have the context of a podcast to say, hey, can you answer some questions for me? I want to learn in this area. And um, man, it, I would love to just connect with you. If you have maybe a subject or you want me to talk about with other leaders and pastor friends that I have, I would love to consider that that uh, that topic. You can email me at daniel at eeleaders.com or connect with us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. The, the handle is EE Leaders. And so we have all these videos, the conversations, the guest lessons, even my own lessons from the podcast set aside individually at our website where you can just watch them or listen to them again and get the notes. And all that is found at eeleaders.com. Calm. Well, part of uh, me sharing my friends with you is this video series we're doing called One Piece of Advice, uh, where I'm asking pastors from all over the nation uh, that I'm connected with, just give me three to four minutes of what what's one piece of advice you can share with us. And I'm just super excited to share from a good friend of mine, Pilgrim Binham. Uh, Pilgrim is over on the west coast of Florida, Bradenton, uh, Florida, right outside of Sarasota, and Pilgrim is a pastor of Shoreline Church, which his family only planted about two years ago. And we were blessed as a church, Redemption Church, to be able to support the work there through encouragement, finances, and just love, and uh, really love this family and got to know them very well through this process. And so uh, I'm just so blessed to see how God is working in them and also through them through their church. You could find more information about their church at Shoreline or thisisshoreline.com. Thisisshoreline.com. Pilgrim also does some amazing writings. Uh, he's a great storyteller and he's going to be doing a, a guest lesson later on in this season. And you can actually find some of his writings uh, featured on calvarychapel.com and also his own blog, pilgrimbenham.com. Uh, he's had a lot of experience and done a lot of great things for the Lord, but uh, more importantly, he truly is just a friend of mine. I love him. I love his family, his kids, his wife. They've genuinely been a blessing to, to my family, and I love being able to get together uh, with him. And so he was one of the first people that I asked for one piece of advice to start this series off, so much so that I messed up on the audio. But you know what? I think it's still good enough. And I want you to hear from my good friend, Pilgrim Benham. And so he's going to talk about friendship and the importance of friendship in ministry. You're listening to One Piece of Advice, brought to you by eeleaders.com, a ministry to encourage and equip church leaders. Hey guys, this is Pastor Pilgrim Benham from Shoreline Church in Bradenton, Florida. And I want to take a minute and talk to you about the importance of friendship in ministry. You know, I think sometimes in ministry, we think, hey, I'm around a lot of people. So, man, I've got so many friends. I mean, look at all the followers I have on Facebook. Look at all the followers I have on Instagram. And yet, as we really begin to peel back the layers a little bit to our own social life, we realize I don't have encouragement. I don't have people around me 
that are peers that can pour into me. And so I want to give you a few practical ideas from the scripture. In Acts chapter 9, we have a guy by the name of Barnabas. And in chapter 9, verse 27, it says, Barnabas took Paul and brought him to the apostles. I think it's really cool that Paul the Apostle, before he got to that place of, of leading and planting churches, Paul needed someone who was a peer to kind of bring him in to a deeper relationship with Jesus. Later in uh, the book of Acts, in uh, chapter 11, it says uh, that Paul's kind of gone now off the scene. He's kind of back in Tarsus, kind of um, about 10 years just out of touch off the, the scene. And it says in verse 25, chapter 11 of Acts, Barnabas departed for Tarsus and he sought after Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And that's where they got involved in ministry. And so it's so important to see that in the life of Paul. Paul had a Barnabas, his name means son, son of encouragement. He had someone in his life who pointed him, pulled him to Jesus, um, that brought him into deeper ministry. And you and I, when we're in ministry as a pastor, as a leader, we've got to have other guys in our life that are going to sometimes pull us, sometimes push us to be closer to the Lord. And they're going to challenge us in uh, discipleship to you. I've got friends from all around Florida, all around the country, and we talk almost on a weekly or, or once a month, twice a month basis. And we, they ask me the tough questions. We, we chat, we pray together. Sometimes it's a text, sometimes it's a meme, sometimes it's a Facebook message, sometimes it's a phone call. But I know these men are praying for me. Uh, these men love me and I love them. And, and there's that accountability and that encouragement. Uh, the other thing that's super important is that when we're struggling, when we're discouraged, I have a phrase, we need to vent up. What I mean by that is we don't vent, meaning let me just share all my frustration with the ministry. We don't do that to someone who is ministering um, underneath our care. Uh, that can shipwreck our ministry very quickly. We want to vent up. I mean, I'm going to vent to someone who's a peer or someone I look up to as a mentor. It's so important that we have a Barnabas in our life that's going to pull us closer to Jesus, that's going to challenge us. Challenge us. And sometimes those Barnabases we're going to sometimes conflict with. We, we see that later in the book of Acts as they disagree over John Mark. There's going to be those moments where iron sharpens iron. But, you know, I think uh, at the end of Paul's ministry, Barnabas was still someone that Paul looked to for encouragement. So I want to just ask, do you have someone in your life that's a friend? Do you have someone in your life that you can rely on, that relies on you? If you don't, man, find someone. Find someone in your church, or better than that, someone in another ministry, another pastor, that you can pour into that you'll receive uh, some love and, and uh, feedback from. God bless you guys, and want to encourage you to go for it. Have a friend. God bless. Well, I've loved introducing all these friends to you, and I have another friend of mine, Andrew Lundy, who's going to be doing our first guest lesson. Uh, Andrew and his family planted Soulless Church uh, in Boca Raton, Florida. It's right next to Delray Beach, and I've been so blessed by what God is doing in and through his family as they have started this venture of faith. And uh, I'm just so grateful for guys like this. Answered prayers, really, as we've been praying to God uh, to bring laborers. Andrew Lundy is one of those guys that is just full of faith and doing great things for the Lord. And so I try to encourage him and me and another leader from Redemption Church were at his vision, vision launch uh, meeting and he was just sharing an amazing message. I just kept on writing down all these notes and different things like that. And I just knew, man, I, I got to share this not only with, with my team, but also uh, with you, the EE Leaders community. And so he is going to share next time about vision and how Jesus gives us vision as leaders. And so I hope that you were encouraged today. I hope that this a conversation that I had with Trip was an investment to you that you can actually now receive and process. And just want to encourage you to continue to pour into other leaders. It's a beautiful thing that we get to do as far as making disciples. So don't give up. Hang in there. Be blessed and continue to do the great things that God has called you to do. Thank you so much for listening to this Leadership Lessons podcast. You can watch all the episodes and get all the show notes at eeleaders.com. If this podcast was a blessing to you, I would love for you to share it with your friends on social media. You can find us on social media at eeleaders. You can also help us spread the word by simply writing a review on iTunes or Google Play. My hope for you with this podcast is that it would encourage you and equip you to continue to serve Jesus. Because remember, 
There's nothing better than doing what God has called you to do.